Hey all, good morning to all of you. I can see a big crowd here and I'm really, really excited here to share this entire demo session and uh, uh, I'll try to like you know, share as much as my knowledge as I can here. And definitely I'll put up a query session in the end where your queries, I'll take it up right away. Uh, feel free to ask me uh, any questions what you have related to this topic or related to your career, if I can answer here. I'll definitely. And uh, apart from that, before I start, I hope you all are doing well uh, because of this pandemic situation. Yes, we are almost at the end, but still I will request all of you to please keep you and your family safe. We all will go with this agenda today. Uh, I'm going to take you through a little bit about the definition. We will try to understand the PV in detail afterwards. And we'll also see that what are the goals in PV, like what we actually try to achieve in the pharmacovigilance or drug safety, you can say. After that, we'll also understand that why pharmacovigilance or post-marketing surveillance is coming so fast now over and above even the clinical trial. It is important, but pharmacovigilance or pharmacovigilance post-marketing surveillance, it is coming very fast in the market now. So we'll try to see uh, some of those concepts. Uh, then I will take you to a little bit in depth Furthermore, to understand about the other things of the pharmacovigilance, like what is the life cycle of pharmacovigilance? What we are expecting to understand in the pharmacovigilance? What are the different departments? Okay, this will give you a holistic 360 degree view of the drug safety. That what is there in industry? And then, of course, a very uh, important topic for all the newcomers in this industry, the career in pharmacovigilance. And at the end, we will discuss about what we are going to cover up in this entire course. And finally, I'll take up all your questions. Definitely, I'll stop in between after every few slides to take up the questions, whatever coming in between. Okay. Please, please let me know if my uh, speed is fast or slow. That would help me to like, you know, go ahead. Okay. So moving to the first question, which I asked you earlier, and I'm again asking this one, that what is pharmacovigilance and what is the need of this pharmacovigilance? Anybody, any idea about pharmacovigilance? Feel free, whatever idea comes to your mind, whatever you have learned till now, any, anywhere you have heard something, please feel free to share. It's a team which <clears throat> it's a team which work uh, for a drug safety. Any new drug treatment for uh, uh, for a disease? Uh, any new drug treatment? Yeah, that is basically comes somewhere with after the research when we are filing uh, the, the, the NDA. After that, yeah, it comes into the market. But after that, what we do in pharmacovigilance? That is correct. What new drugs we do. Okay, so before I start, I don't want to keep you uh, in confusion. Pharmacovigilance and the drug safety and the post-marketing surveillance all are same term. Please, whenever you see next time, don't get confused. Okay, it, it's similar like uh, when we say uh, two English words and like, you know, we are just saying that, okay, can we use this word or this word. Sometimes we say, yeah, these are synonyms. Similar way, these are actually synonyms when you come in the industry. Okay, but just to keep a little bit separate from clinical trials or others, like, you know, to save a profile, we usually say pharmacovigilance. So it's, it's a completely a separate department. So don't get confused if you think that it's not a drug safety. It is drug safety only, okay? but itself, we are calling it as pharmacovigilance, this department. Okay, now let's see that whatever you have just said, I will try to, uh, like, you know, it together now these things so as per the universal definition what actually we need to always learn even though you have so many concepts so many uh, own definitions own terminologies to say but this is the definition from who for pharmacovigilance so pharmacovigilance is nothing but it's basically a science and the actions related to the detection assessment understanding and prevention of the adverse effects or any other drug related problem. Okay, so if we can't try to like, you know, make it in small pieces, it is basically nothing else. It's basically a science. 
okay where we are when the drug comes into the market or even it is in clinical trial during that time also we are trying to see we trying to detect adverse events adverse events are what it is basically any undesired effect what you are getting after taking the drug you are not desiring that effect. okay even a small thing that is after taking a cetirizine for cold and cough you are started feeling sleepy drowsy this is something which you have actually not desired right but it is a side effect that is a undesired we want to detect those things we want to assess there are so many assessment scales which we are going to learn in our entire course we are going to assess those things we are going to understand analyze those cases and after that we are we need to report to the authority so that it will reach to the public that what action need to be taken to the drug and why we are doing all this thing to prevent this adverse events to happen in the future this is with any drug even with a medical device we are doing the pharmacovigilance for drug for allopathic ayurvedic all the drugs we need to do this is becoming a mandatory by all the regulatory authority around the world we have the international guidelines for doing this thing. and if we try to split this word then also you can easily remember pharmacon the latin word is drug and the vigilance the latin word is to keep a watch to keep eye on this drug that is what we are actually doing in the pharmacovigilance so let's let's summarize all together so you can just say on mute like you know with me pharmacovigilance is simply the science and actions which is related to daup that is detection assessment understanding and prevention of the adverse effects or any other drug related problem very simple definition okay and by understanding wise i think now you can also understand it simply keep a eye on the drug that is it giving us only the desired effect or there are other undesired effects started coming okay now <clears throat> the terms i think which we have just used few terms there are few other terms which you need to understand for going into the pharmacovigilance here i am just touching up few very very important terms but there are n number of other terms which we are going to understand during our entire course okay which is very important when we are going to the course first is adverse event and the second is adverse drug reaction now anybody wants to say that uh, what is adverse event what is adr or adverse drug reaction any any difference if you have any idea on that sir causality causal relationship sir causality relationship uh, to one adr in, it will in, come up or ae it will sir, come up. in, a, in a, the causality is the main cause for the adverse drug reaction but in mm -hmm. the adverse event the causality may or may not be uh may may not be uh, either cause for the adverse event but in the adverse reaction uh, the causality is the main thing for the adverse drug reaction okay very good anybody else wants to uh, write up in any other word or anything else want to add on but really i'm i'm impressed you guys are really doing well because uh, like you know you guys i think you all <laughs> did really a good homework also that is really really impressed so uh, i would put it up very simply okay uh, the others who have never read this thing you can easily understand this part so in a very very layman term i am putting not in any definition right now adverse event and adverse drug reaction single line difference is the causality assessment right now what is causality assessment that is another question right so adverse so causality assessment is basically a likelihoodness that a drug caused a particular reaction so let's say that you took a drug today and tomorrow morning you wake up and you start having like you know fever and shivering so you will definitely start thinking that why i'm actually having is because of some other viral infection or because of the drug okay when you start going further down okay then you like if we i if i ask you that did you took any drug or something then you say that this one so for me right now the first thing in my mind comes that the drug can cause some problem okay so that is now becoming a little bit causality is there but that is now a adverse event right now i am not 100% sure but here here it is adverse event that means something happened after taking the drug which is undesired 
the first thing adverse event that's it now as a pharmacovigilance person i will go through some scales called some some causality assessment scale and some other scales are there okay i will check all those criticality and then finally i will come up with a particular scale level of that event that is that on the certain side or on the uncertain side or probable side with the help of that i will actually decide and if it is really on the certain side then we can say that it is not a but it is a but now this is further categorized as adr adverse drug reaction now we have very much sure that this drug causes this problem so that is a thin line difference when we are sure then we are just unsure but we actually have something that it is taken the drug is taken and the event happened then it is a when we got surety casualty assessment done we can say that it is an adr okay so this is the basic difference in between serious adr serious adverse drug reaction is basically when we have there are certain criteria anybody who have any idea what are those serious criteria sir can i share yes please go ahead um, sir identifiable reporter identifiable patient uh, adverse event sorry to interrupt but that is actually not the answer that when it leads to death sir, or or pertaining the hospitalization okay yes Which that is one of the criteria correct difficulty which causes death difficulty in breathing correct very correct hospitalization prolonged hospitalization correct correct spandana right or spandana if i am correct yeah okay great yes uh, and yeah the other one i think vaibhav or who was speaking yeah you you are actually correct but not serious adr that's some of the criteria for making a case valid okay So this the serious criteria are there if the person let's say died after taking the drug or is a life threatening condition you went into the coma like you end up in the coma somewhere or in the icu or hospitalization happened or maybe prolongation of hospitalization happened okay or maybe there is a congenital anomaly that is a birth defect okay or a physical disability or out apart from that if somebody somebody is actually getting diabetes situation okay it's not really serious but if it was not controlled that situation is a diabetes happen like you know the patient gets so much diabetes that okay i am if i will not reach to the hospital i will die something like that even though the condition is not at that level but that is also considered as serious so all this condition if happens these are serious adr if person not, not able to perform his normal function normal daily functions the person is okay is just doing the normal function or not able to do the normal function no not able to do the normal function so then it is a physical disability and that is also called a serious criteria right okay right all right uh, even physic uh, is it's a sorry permanent disability or a temporary disability that also considered as a serious criteria somebody even for temporary disability happen for a month or so let's say but that is serious that is also a serious criteria good question um now comes the medication error medication error is another important term in our pharmacovigilance uh, industry lot of cases comes every day related to medication error any idea anybody any unintended failure in the drug treatment process yes sir whoever you are of the patient okay i'm sorry somebody else Vaibha sir, hello. Yes, Vaibha, please go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. It is a any kind of mistake regarding the prescription or any dis dispensing of drug. Very good, very good. Anybody else want to add on anything? Inappropriate medication use. Inappropriate medical medication use. That is really good. Correct answer. Anybody else? Anything? nothing vaba mohammed i got your answer anybody uh, bhaskar i think you are unmuted uh, do you want to answer okay great thank you uh, for uh, like you know putting up the words so medication error a simple way it is anything which actually happened before you take the drug 
now you will say that why it is adr or ae right but this is kind of a uh, uh, i can say a loophole or not actually a loophole but still uh, when we when we like you know when this guidelines created they kept this also as an adr now why because even though you have not took the medication but let's say your doctor wrote the wrong prescription to you wrong medication by mistakenly or it or your pharmacist mistakenly understood the wrong spelling or wrong drug we have so many similar name drugs right and he or she dispensed you the wrong medication or by any chance you got everything right but when you are taking or let's say our grandparents they are taking they mistakenly took instead of a drug a b drug okay in the wrong time that is also medication error so these are all the medication errors which are actually not really really and side effect but these are errors and these are also considered under the ae okay now comes another thing called as expedited reporting and aggregate reporting now this one i don't want to like you know go and check with you because this concept is basically uh, not really related to reactions but this is our reporting system okay i'll put up that what is it what entire thing it is so our main entire course depends on these two things okay that is what kind of reporting we are going to learn at one time and the another time so expedited means as the term says fast reporting single cases comes serious cases comes we need to report it to the authority in timely manner there are certain number of steps which we need to understand there are so many things which we need to understand in the case process so many departments we have to understand okay apart from that there is a aggregate reporting means not daily type of reporting urgent reporting but after three months six months depend on the regulatory guidelines we have to create our bulk file the company creates that in this last three months six months we have received this many reports this is my experience about my drug this is doing good or bad and then we will send that entire big file to the authority and then the authority will decide what action need to be taken or not it's like your report card of your drug okay with a particular timely basis that is aggregate reporting and this is another very big chapter which we understand there are so many different types of report we will understand during our course okay so i'll just keep a short on that considering it's a demo session because others may have their saturday to use i'll just move to the next topic any any doubt anybody have on this terms <laughs> yes sir yes yes please go ahead uh, sir just i want to know the difference between expedited reporting and aggregated reporting that i don't understand the topic like okay i'll 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 put up uh, with an example i think that will help you okay so yes, let's sir. let's say uh let's say uh let's say an exam okay uh, you are you are you are going with this particular course and on daily basis i'm taking your some kind of mcq type of test okay. okay so you are actually giving me your knowledge every single day at what you are understanding with that particular topic okay so this is like expedited reporting that means every day or other day yes. i'm getting some serious cases i'm reporting right away because authority don't want to wait for serious cases to understand and to take okay. action but there are like, some non serious cases also like immediate action immediate action but then there are some non serious cases also there are so many medication error cases also you don't want to bother the authority every day right okay that's that's a, because there are so many companies they are not sending every day thousands of uh, like you know extra non serious cases too. so what do you want to do it's like final exam i will have it's similar like that after 6 months or 3 months depends on country to country so that's why i'm not saying only 3 only 6 or only an year it is different different countries have their own their, their regulatory bodies they have their own timeline set up so by this way at the end of that you have your own date and time on the basis of that you will start preparing your big bulk report of serious non serious medication error what is your experience in all the other countries also your drug if you are selling so many things and then you will compile the report and that is called as aggregate report and then you are sending that report so that the authority can once in a year or once in a six month they will keep on reviewing your drug and take back good okay okay
now moving to the another topic that is tv in detail so we are just i'm just taking the same thing what i have just mentioned but a little bit in another elaborate way so what we are doing in pharmacovigilance we are collecting adverse event reports on daily basis we are getting thousands of reports and that is one of the reason it is booming field we are getting more cases we are having more jobs in the industry okay we analyze the adverse events there are scales available by which we are need to analyze the adverse events okay we also do the assessment similar like analyze it's it's kind of a same thing we do the assessment with those scales like causality assessment also one of them with that another topic which we also understand in our course is the medical coding now medical coding is not that coding which you have uh, that oh wow this is another hard topic no this is simple topic but yes there are some some important steps which we need to understand okay while we are going to do the coding so we will just understand a little bit about some of the dictionary okay that which dictionary we need to use in the industry there are some scientific dictionaries so those we need to understand i will take you through those things that how it actually work okay then there comes the communication that is another part of pharmacovigilance we are daily in and out communicating to some other companies to the academias to the hospitals or to the authorities okay or to the to the reporters to the doctors so there are so many communication happens maybe sometimes you are not directly doing that thing so your seniors are doing something so this is how we need to communicate because that's how the reports actually get or the information get communicated about ace adrs and why we are doing all this thing the pharmacovigilance the main detail main thing is we are actually going to save the public life and also we are actually educating them so now you are getting that information similar way slowly slowly this will come in the public more what is pharmacovigilance you should be more uh, like you know uh, knowledgeable about that thing you should report this thing in india it is not much but you just go and check in the us uk or any other uh, european countries okay we have so many company project in india from where we are supporting to the outer country they are so much excited to report you can't believe you will get so many cases on call via emails via fax via so many channels every day so many cases come through this is how we are getting the information okay so another last purpose is education and training to the doctors to the general patients that about the pharmacovigilance so this is these are the main key pillars of pharmacovigilance <clears throat> the same thing which i have just put it up over there it's here in the words that what we do basically we are doing the reevaluation of the benefit and the risk balance now you will say that wow this is another new word it's a simple thing that once the drug comes into the market okay authority checks the drug it says that it is really beneficial it is good but we all know from the pharma or from the life science background that every drug has certain risk to but authority only approves when the benefits are more than the risk but do you really think that the benefits always remains the same anybody any answer or the risk will never go up anybody any 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 answer yes no so can, sir, can you can repeat you your question so sure. i'm saying that once the drug comes from the clinical trial to the market it get reviewed by the drug authority is that correct is yes sir correct? yes so it get reviewed from the regulatory authority you do the nda application filing or any of that as per the country to country if you get your drug in the market okay you have seen this covid vaccines they come after the approval from dgci is okay cds co our authority that they approved this uh, our covid vaccines and then only they came into the market but do you think that whatever they have learned during that time the risk and the benefits it will be the same there will be no further risk no sir there can be there can be risk no, uh, there sir. can be 
newer adverse effects in the real world exactly right that's what i want to say to all of you that is that is why we are going to be there so that's how we are going to capture a new adverse event which we have never seen during the clinical trials which we never had experience because of those limited understanding during the clinical trials okay so the benefit risk balance this thing is very important which we will keep on checking and checking and checking second is improve public health and safety this is our ultimate another goal that we need to improve the public health and safety and that's why we are doing our job early detection of unknown adrs which we have no idea during the clinical trials we need to only detect those problems by doing this pharmacogenic and also the detection of increase in frequency you have an idea from the clinical trial that one in 1000 this event can happen but once it is in the market okay in the open public the uh, particular event maybe it will go to 100 or 10 in 1000 frequency increase right it is a benefit risk balance is now going on the riskier side so that is also we have to do identification of early risk factors communication of risk and benefit education and informing of patients consumers so these things are what we are actually doing on the pb <clears throat> okay now comes to the another question which is very important that if we are doing clinical trials why this pharmacovigilance or post marketing surveillance is actually required we did so much good clinical trials then why these are the reasons during the clinical trial we have limited safety data because of why because we have limited subjects over there okay a narrow population if it is children we are going into test only on children or adults only adults not elderly patients a limited population and also for the shorter duration we are going to do the test right we, the, the clinical trial project go to how long okay just i'm talking about clinical trial part not pre clinical it can be 6 years 7 years let's say maximum stress to 10 years but still in that short duration you cannot say that i studied this drug 100% unidentified rare adr that is you have not found some of the rare of rare adr you have not not able to find during the clinical trial because some rare adr will happen with the long long use of the drug maybe you are taking for 10 years or 15 years then some new side effect will come up. so some of these drugs you cannot find some of this adverse event you cannot find during the clinical trial and drug drug food drug interaction very important you cannot test all the drug drug interaction or the food drug interaction here in clinical trial so there are so many things which you are not aware of during the uh, related to the drug safety that you are not aware during the clinical trial and you, that's why you need to keep an eye on the drug and during the drug once it comes into the market okay so many new side effects you will find out of that drug. the the very a uh, good example i can just give you uh, as i have i have known this ester zenica project uh, from one of my friend like you know working on this pharmacovigilance related to ester zenica or this oxford uh, covid vaccine okay which we are here calling it as covishield and uk they have their own oxford company or ester zenica that product so if you have followed that news they actually banned the drug and then open the drug they again ban the drug something like happened right why because there are so many unwanted side uh, this side effects or adrs actually they came up and the public don't know much this happened believe me but don't get scared i'm not telling you that covid shield or this one is not bad i to get covid shield only but this thing happens okay that the drug which actually there till the clinical trial you have only limited now but once it comes into the market you have found so many new side effects or adrs that's why we are getting thousands and thousands of cases to process every day this is another slide just to quickly show you the data that companies why now they are so much serious about the things because they used to put so much of money in the research 
clinical trial on that earlier but as they started learning that pv is an integral part in last 10 15 years pv actually boomed a lot that now the similar budget company are putting on research a similar budget they are putting on the pharmacokinetics and that's why i am saying all this thing because i will show you the slide where it will show you that how fast the companies are actually putting money and every year like billions of dollar they are putting up in doing this activity this is a simple global pv trend pharmacovigilance market from 18 to 2025 expected it is growing at the rate of 10.5% cagr okay it is in billions there that it is growing and india is becoming one of the best market of doing the pharmacovigilance activity because here pv is growing in india itself right now it is very very emerging stage but in the world stage pv uh, india is supporting actually for the world doing this pv activities from here outsourcing tasks so many jobs are there <clears throat> lastly not much i will take your little time on this pv and then i will quickly take you the course part what we are going to cover so deep down in pharmacovigilance pv now this slide will give you us insight that pharmacovigilance is not only restricted to the products which comes in the market that is after the drug get approved okay pharmacovigilance actually starts while the drug comes into the clinical trial okay the stage 1 of the clinical trial phase 1 okay because once the drug starts hitting the human bodies it is the authorities mandatory requirement that you need to keep an eye and inform us right away any side effect happen you all know this thing if i'm correct but we know it as a clinical trial it is not a clinical trial it is actually a part of pharmacovigilance pharmacovigilance department comes here right away when there is any side effect comes up any unwanted adrs comes up we are going to take that information from clinical trial process it accordingly and share it with the authority even the aggregate reports you can see this big blue circle now this is a clinical trial circle but you can see this ribbons yellow ribbon let's go on the fourth ribbon it says dsur development safety update report this is basically a pharmacovigilance report very very important report okay this we only create during the clinical trial if you are by any chance working for clinical trial projects in the pharmacovigilance department but you are taking care of clinical trial cases definitely you will see that there is another team sitting next to you who are working on the aggregate reports called as dsur okay so similar way it is just showing dsur but there are cases also which we are processing and once the drug comes into the market after this second dotted line you can see the pharmacovigilance cycle starts and the very good thing is pharmacovigilance cycle is having no limitations once the drug till the time the drug is there in the market your pv will go on and on and on only when the drug comes withdrawn from the market okay even after that for next another 3 to 5 years depends on the country to country we need to do the pharmacovigilance till that time so it is not a small project it is an operation hence we can say that we do not have a limited time life or time scale in a particular company for doing only on a single project the pharmacovigilance department will just keep on running <clears throat> so this is the pharmacovigilance cycle i can say so the time when the drug hits the human body and till the drug is is in the market we need to keep an eye on the drug any questions on this part anybody who manage the whole process like any organization or any no it's basically it's basically an organization okay you can say that cro's there are nowadays it companies also pitch in in doing those outsourcing task for the pharma companies pharma companies first of all they can do by themselves okay let's say some of the big companies like gsk or you can say pfizer merck they keep a lot of activity related to this in their own bucket in under their own company 
okay at their level but they also even the big companies they also lot of activities like aggregate report or uh, there are other types of reports in the pharmacovigilance like literature reporting don't want to go in much in depth in that part right now they usually outsource those things to the another cro's or some it companies so they have good amount of resource to handle those cases okay so that's how it is not limited to pharma companies that you are going to hit only the pharma companies but you can have your job opportunities in cro's and there are so many it companies nowadays who are actually having their life science department and actually they are supporting directly to the pharmacovigilance related activities they are getting so many big big clients project and supporting them am i answered your question yes sir okay anybody else any any question on that okay moving to the next slide uh, that is partners and stakeholders in the pharmacovigilance pharmacovigilance in that there are so many stakeholders are there with which we are daily basis interacting it is not an silo project that you can say that okay wow we just do our project and we are out of it no you are you need to under you need to keep yourself updated you need to understand that there are so many government guidelines changing on yearly basis sometimes monthly basis so many regulatory guidelines comes up okay you need to deal with hospitals academias you need to deal with other pharmaceutical companies or there are associations their guidelines doctors patients there are guidelines from who ich cioms these are international organization we have to understand them we need to keep ourselves updated and also we need to interact with them as and when required so there are so many stakeholders in the pharmacovigilance what to report and how to report a very very simple answer that what to report any undesired effect happened after taking the drug plus the medication errors which happened before taking the drug are all reportable anything happened to you even the blood pressure shoot up or there are any other lab findings which are not desired okay these are all reportable everything even you will get the report that after taking that this drug my blood pressure shoot up or uh, I, i i i break my tablet into half and consumed it it is also an e can you believe it is an e because this is a medication error you cannot break a tablet into half because it is a unit dose occupational exposure the person is saying that i am actually working in a Uh, uh, a hormonal company where the, where the female hormonal drugs are uh, like you know prepared and now i am having this this another problem it is an occupational exposure so these things are also reportable all this thing what happen even after consuming the drug indirectly consuming the drug or medication errors these are all adverse events reported there are so many different different types of forms available to report this thing we are going to understand those things in our separate lecture here simple form from india i'm just putting it up these type of forms are there by which anybody can share their side effects or their experience about the drug with the authority or with the company okay there are their personal information patient information about the drug about the events what happened this we need to share. any any question anybody okay moving to the another one very important part where which will actually make you a little bit more interesting is interested towards this topic that are we doing are we going to be in only one department or there are other departments why like my what about my career after 2 years what i will do i can tell you that since last overall we can i can tell you that i'm since last 12 years in this industry just moving from one to another ladder understanding so many things with so many roles i will tell you my profile after this because then you can understand the profile better like who is actually helping us in understanding this part so there are so many departments from where you can start from one department you can move 
you can also move from in the form of roles from associate to the leaders in that role or from one department to another department there are so many like safety reporting is there where a general daily basis type of safety reporting we are doing aggregate reporting department is there our narrative writings are there that means there are certain type of like essay type of specific thing is there we are going to understand that separately okay that is a very uh, interesting part of my entire course we are going to do so many cases practical cases so that's a separate department of narrative writing or any other pharmacovigilance type of writing related to labels if the company have that department also there is a signal signal is again not a telephone signal it is basically an adverse event that what is the frequency of cases coming up there is a separate department which is tracking that part signal stream then there is a risk management planning team which comes once you are having so many risk okay so they need to minimize those risk otherwise the drug will be out of the market so this department separately works on the risk minimization risk management planning then there comes the administrative type of control where comes the quality department which is over and above all this department you can be a part of that department if you are interested in more about uh, checking the quality audits doing some uh, deviations understanding those those parts okay agreements pharmacovigilance agreement company to company agreements if you are interested in that part then there is global safety database you can be a part of that so if you understand more about the database you can also support the company in working on behind the scene about on the database there can be other other things like regulatory supports qppv is a qualified person for pharmacovigilance only in europe you can work with the qppv as a face of the company to directly deal with the european medicine agency that is for entire europe this is a regulatory body and these are also limited there can be so many things in reporting you can in the department of literature reporting uh, spontaneous reporting solicited maybe the terms are new for you but very easy way uh, it can be like a paper type from articles when we are getting some reporting it can be literature reporting directly from patients when we are getting some cases spontaneous type of reporting from some clinical trials we are getting the cases solicited type of reporting so we can have so many types of reportings and different different departments are there okay so there are n number of departments it all depends from where you want to start your career and where you want to end up your career and i will definitely tell you every single department in depth during my course so that you can actually have a very good decision making capability and how to enter from where you have to start the game don't jump in here and there mistakenly please otherwise after 5 years you start thinking that i did not like you know I, if i did this that part maybe i would be there now a little bit about myself and that's one of the reason i just kept my slide at the end so i am deep prakash and uh, i'm basically post graduate in clinical research and pharmacovigilance apart from my studies in the pharma okay i'm masters in pharmaceutics basically i have more than 12 years of experience in pharmacovigilance domain itself in various cro's pharma industries it industries uh overall including not only tv but other pharma background i have a 16 plus years of experience in this business and i'm actually a certified member of european medicine agency i got the certifications from them i'm also working worked on many roles uh, including team lead project manager program manager with the client as a client relationship manager also on certain other tasks like pv trainer and the agile coach there are multiple roles i played in the industry so any any question about my profile please let me know if you have yes i am actually masters in sotics from uh, brooklyn university usa okay uh experience my experience basically in all these departments actually this i have not yet updated but in last two or three years when i was with, with this institute there are certain more thing added in my profile now 
So I started somewhere with my case processing. I jumped in various different departments. Again, these are not lined up exactly, but literature reporting, aggregate reporting, I worked narrative reporting, signals, RMP, also in SOP and then pre agreement is like quality admin department. I worked as a project manager, multiple projects. PPPV support directly with the, as I'm very good with the EMA certified. So I'm like, you know, directly supported the company's top hat for supporting the pharmacogenes. PV trainer is from last seven, eight years, I think so. And then PV safety database. Nowadays, I'm more towards now going in the database part. So it's like IT and other things. A lot of things uh, I have during our entire course. You can do a lot of chit chat, ask me whatever the questions you have about myself. And we will definitely, I'll share my personal experience with you. Now, the question or uh, things may be coming to your mind is related to career in pharmacovigilance, correct? It is the big question. Wow, Dave, you told us a lot of things. Please come on the main topic that is the career. Okay. First of all, I would like to take a very, very importantly, like you know, your uh, uh, keen look on this slide because this will make you more excited towards this particular field. Why I'm saying that you have to have your career in this particular domain? First, it is a new domain in the life science. Clinical trials, TDM, or manufacturing, pharma manufacturing, or any pharma related backgrounds or any life science background, you may have you may have that thing from last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Okay. But this particular domain came in the uh, limelight since last 15, 20 years after the real, real cute guidelines came up in the market. Solid guidelines. And after that, it starts booming. It is a new domain. Hence, please do not think that there is any saturation in next 20 years or so that I can tell you right, right away. I am there in industry since last 12 years or so when even there were no PV in India. I saw PV guidelines in front of me in India that they actually had the planning. Now we started in India. It is still at a very, very new stage. Second, entire drug cycle, it goes on. As I have showed you that PV starts from clinical trial and there is no ending till the drug is in market, PV will be there in the market. So there is no such like you know thing that you are going to see that oh wow now the market is saturated no there will always be demand in here or there or so many different departments but there are so many numerous internal departments i have just showed you you cannot say that oh i'm getting bored now and my career gets struck no why please move it to the other, other department learn something more okay so that is important and there is no saturation. Just give you an example. Okay, at least for next 20 years, I can say right up. Unlike other departments, other domains, you are seeing that now it is getting a little bit saturated. Okay, but this department is not. Even it is actually started booming more since last two and a half years after this Corona and this COVID-19 thing. Believe me, I have seen so many individuals, even my batches, got absorbed right away into the industry after completing some of even during my course they got the offers that is really, really actually made me happy and heavy requirement which i have just explained very heavy requirement is there but the problem only is once you hit the companies there are questionnaires there are questions there are things which they will try to see in you because company do not want to put their money their time on train training you Okay, and secondly, if you go inside, you will only get the training for a specific department part. If you are going for a case processing literature reporting, please don't go here and there, just understand that part. After 10 days or 15 days start in the production because they have their own budgets. That is the problem. Now, PV in all the countries, this is another good thing. You cannot say that, wow, PV is only in India or I just can do the PV for India only. No. Every single country has their own regulatory authority. They have their own guidelines and their country drug, their events, you have to finally process and report to their authority on. 
So for even a single company like a Pfizer, let's say example, okay, if they are getting outsourced their projects for around the world, okay, wherever they have their drug or a COVID vaccine, they have to set up a center here or outsource the thing in such a way that there, there should be some candidates who are supporting for Europe, some for USA, some for Australia, some for India, depends because these candidates need to be expertised in that particular country's pharmacovigilance. You cannot easily work for at the same time to Australia and America right away because they don't want this. So there are so many opportunities out there. Yes, you can move from one to other. So that's that's one. These are the, some of the good reasons I can tell you that you can get more excited in this field. This is another report, small screenshot. Please don't think that, wow, what is this confusing slide? It is very simple. On the top, you can see this arrow mark. This is just showing that 17 till 24. It is this market of pharmacogenesis is growing every year at the 10.7% cumulative annual growth rate, CAGR. You can just understand that the uh, time when most of the country uh, companies or most of the domains are now started getting saturated, we are growing. And in the next picture here, you can see that there are so many countries are showed with the mark. This is kind of a, a global, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, market insight from one of the reputed uh, company. <clears throat> you can see that they have shown US, Germany, and after that, a big market is India. India is becoming a very big market of PV now. Okay. Even if we come on the third side, you will see that this market is actually not, I'm not saying only for the particular post marketing product, that is the phase four of your clinical trial is called as post marketing, but also for the pre clinical, we are growing at the 10.2% CAGR. So you can just imagine now that so much of money is coming into the market. And if it is coming, where it will go? They need to, they, they want people to be there to support them. But only thing is, all the companies need right away a ready-made resource to use. And if you are that person, you will right away get consumed in your desired company. Okay, so any, any, any questions anybody have on that part? This is a worldwide report from WHO. Please don't say that why it is still 2012 because WHO just presented till 2012 only. Okay, but this graph is just to show you that you can see the sharp increase after 2002 in the A reported age. So WHO is getting kind of from all the countries. The, there, is a, there is a final database with the WHO where the information flows. Okay, so you can see that this is sharply rise. And again, this is for the world. This is why it is a good news because we are getting more and more aware about the problems so that we can take the action. And for us, it is a better job opportunity. Same way in India, you can see. Before 2010, when I actually came into the market, I remember. It was not there because at that time it was just a roadmap on paper. And India really did a good job because the plan was 2020, but by 2015 only, they really, really set up everything and started doing running very fast. Okay, from the various hospitals, colleges, where they have the centers, they started getting the cases. So I'm taking a small pause before going to this slide i think there are only few very few slides left okay so just be with me another few more minutes any question until now related to the market or anything okay hello yes. sir yes, yes please go ahead uh, sir i am abhishek mm -hmm. uh, sir i have completed my master in uh, applied microbiology mm, sir it is Pharmacovigilance is suitable for me or not? Have you any suggestion me 
So that is that is the question that you can see over here, right? The first question <laughs> is it with you? I think that is the first when first or second is for your whatever you're asking me. So I'm just coming to your question. That's why I just kept this slide over here because that is what you started thinking. I can imagine you like you know standing here like this, that thinking, are am I ready to enter into this domain? Or am I having enough knowledge? Is my background is correct to go into this industry? So this is what I think uh, all of you have the question. My answer is very simple. <clears throat> if you have, if you have any of this background with you, okay, that is from the pharma background, from the medical background, medicines, that is MBBS, MDs, BDS, BHMS, or nursing background, you have a background of the clinical research experience. You have the background of biotechnology, biotechnology studies or microbiology studies or from any other biological or chemical related science studies, even BSc. I have seen a lot of many people from the BSc, the science, okay, uh, with biology or chemistry with their one of the expertise. Okay, they entered into this domain and really, really like, you know, on the lead or project manager stage. I have seen, I have worked shoulder to shoulder with them. So I can say now, I think uh, the question may be answered that yes, if you are from micro or biotechnology background also, you have similar chances like the other pharma or, medic or medical person have. The only thing is, please be with me in the entire course, learn the things, what I'm telling you, and then you can easily crack the interviews and get into the industry. Company just need the best person for the job. Okay, they are not saying that your this particular background is not suitable. If you can crack answers easily, you can crack and get, enter into the industry. And you just need your first step into the industry. You can easily make your career. Uh, Thank you. Sure. Anybody have any other questions related to this? Yes, sir. Yes, Weber. Yes, yes Weber. Uh, sir, just I want to know that uh, what is the actual work you want to do in a PV sector? Actual work is basically so many things. As I've showed you, so many departments. I cannot say right away that actual work is this or that because there are so many departments. But I can say. Actual work is basically to understand the reports, to grab the reports, to understand the A reports, and to basically process this A reports to the authority. And whatever the action comes up, we have to implement those actions. That is a very simple way, but this is not as simple as it looks right now. There are so many departments are there who are working in and out. Okay for the case processing departments, aggregate team is doing their aggregate reports. Every month they are getting so many aggregate reports to prepare. They have to compile so many big files. And then the signal teams comes, which are keeping an eye on signals. There are RMP teams, risk management. Every day they are like, you know, uh, fighting with so many uh, risk that they have to see that how to minimize. Then there are other quality teams are there. Then there are global safety database teams are there. There are so many things, but ultimately the end, so the final line is that we have to, we are actually working for only one important thing to improve the public safety and how by understanding or getting the cases right away, processing it and notifying it to the authority in timely manner. <clears throat> Am I answered your question? Yes, sir. So basically, it is all of all about the software work. Mostly, okay. Yes, if your answer question is related yes, to that, we are working on the ground as a as a as a manufacturing or trials. Yes, for ninety percent of the work, I can say are basically related to software only. Okay, uh, from the computer. Yes, we are working through softwares to our different words, Excel depends like what company is providing us. With that only, yes. If the question is related to how we are doing, yes. It is basically via the computers mostly. So I'm since last two years working from my home only, okay? And I'm doing good in pharmacogenics department. 
so it is it is nothing that we have to go on the site and do something yes pv is one this is one of the good thing if you actually thinking that it will be and i think female candidates are so much excited because of one of this reason that we are getting our your work life balance better uh this is joy deep here i i have just one question like is there any particular software programming something uh, to learn so that we can uh, get into easily uh, in these sectors there are so many i'll i'll take you to that or maybe another another or another slide where i'm going to show you my course okay there you can see that part okay so i i will take any other questions once i am done with this slide okay i'll take other questions too please uh, just keep your questions with you please do not forget ask me okay do not forget to ask ask me i'm just keeping going on uh, for one or two more slides what i will learn in this course now the question the thing is uh, the our course is basically designed uh, the domain specific we try to cover every single domain even the sub domains under that okay under aggregate report how many different reports are comes up under case processing what are the different types of case processing okay we try to i try to cover every single product uh, part in this entire pv life cycle so that you will not go in the industry as a blank person okay because there are so many 90% people are actually blank they just start but they don't know what is the next step okay we also focus more on practical concepts i will give you cases you will solve the cases i'll tell you that where you are doing wrong so that when you are in the industry in the very first go only they will get so much amazed whoever is the interviewer that you are actually a ready made resource right away you are so much good with the cases okay all this part now this is the entire my course structure there are so many things which may be not able to fit into this one slide okay so these are bold main major major uh, portions the drug discovery development we'll start somewhere with the basics understanding we'll go for pv basics a history of understanding of that part practical cases we will do individual case safety reporting a reports case processing you can say we'll understand that part major part okay that is a major part of my course then goes to aggregate reporting pv database there are so many database the question you asked me okay uh, there are argus ares if you want to just want to see a note down uh, okay there are so many other database are available but it depends on company to company what database they actually purchased and they asked you to use and then there are various medical dictionaries um, we will understand that part we'll also see some worldwide guidelines okay quality system if you are interested there are so many uh, female candidates who are more interested in quality part okay so that also we will understand then what are the some of the recent developments we'll see that and yes the job opportunity and career discussion i'll definitely keep a separate session or maybe more than one session as required for the career discussion but i usually start doing this discussion from my day one itself okay whenever it come i'll tell you that this is important this is like you know this is something like how the question can come and how you need to answer so those things are very important i still remember there is actually i remember i think last may or june somewhere uh, 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 like one of my medical uh, student like my first friend of medical background she she got as a medical reviewer which is uh, very very good for any new joiner to get at that position and she told me dev you told me really the sir you told me same question and every single answer like and you know, i given they were so much appreciating that how you know in the very beginning of your days these answers and that's how they she just uh, she actually thought like you know to be only a medical reviewer but she got a lead medical reviewer handling the entire team that's 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 what we can achieve if we have entire good knowledge okay um apart from that these are some of the screenshots of the database uh, joydeep you are asking so there are argus ares you can see in the end i have written the name vnet and there are various softwares available in the market we will see some live recordings or the things which i have which i will show you take it up at how the case information we are filling in the database how we are actually that will help you to understand that what i actually need to do in this database so that it will it will not be a new when you in, uh, enter into the industry okay 
Because I remember when I entered into the industry, it was nothing like this. Okay, there was no PV anywhere outside in the market. So when we saw this case, wow, it looks very different, right? It looks like a simple uh, kind of a form thing which we are filling up for our Aadhaar card or anything else. It's not like that. So many things we will understand, codings and other things that will come. So it is which kind of the database you are showing? Argus. The first name, second line, you can see in the bottom. Right now, it is Argus. Okay, even on the next, on the top, you can see Oracle. So it is from the Oracle only. <clears throat> okay, the important thing is a career opportunity discussion. And this is something which is very, very close to my heart because I, I remember my early days when I used to try to understand that what is going to be my career in this TV. Am I really in the good field? What is my next step will be there? Okay. From where I start from up to what level I can go. Okay. What are the different, different companies where I can apply and what is the way I can apply, how I can build my network. There are so many things which I, I know that in the beginning days it comes. Okay. We will try to discuss all this thing in our entire course. These are so many different, different opportunities. We can start from one department. We can move in a number of departments in our career. Okay. As I've just showed you earlier, it's the same thing here. Also, there are so many pharmacogenous services available in the market. <clears throat>